and welcome to episode 14 of Heroic Stats and Any Heroics podcast. My name is Stephen. Uh, I'm joined today by the intern, John Partridge, and Dave Farmer, the Bond villain. Um, if you're not aware of who we are, we are, of course, Any Heroics, uh, the only GBHL team with a 100% flat management structure. Um, I am the current rankings officer and captain of Any Heroics. Uh, John, you are the uh, artisan of the West from last year, just a hobbyist, you swear. Uh, yep. For about six months, you were uh, noob of the year last year, weren't you? Best newcomer? And then it all came crashing down when other okay. people realised they could play the game. Yes. And uh, Dave is arguably one of the best British players to ever play the game, uh, having podiumed the league multiple times and won many, many, many GBHL 100s. At least two. Um, at least two. At least two. That I'm aware of. Um, if you don't know no. what we do here, we uh, review the tournaments of the weekend gone by, we talk about hobby stuff, uh, anything that takes our fancy, really. Um, so, yeah, welcome back. Or if this is your first time listening, welcome. Um, first of all, we do, of course, have to mention that we are affiliated with the wonderful Firestorm Games. It um, definitely is. Make sure to get all of your hobby supplies and miniatures. Anything unrelated. I'm pretty sure they do like uh, anime, like figurine, quadrumajiggies. That's how my dad would describe it. Um, <laughs> Star Wars stuff. Like, Said with all the confidence of a man who didn't check Lo- before. Lorcana, the they definitely do. Um, <laughs> for sure. Which is Dangerous. Then. Oh no, John's going to be using our, our we, affiliate link in a second. Can we use our affiliate link to buy burgers in their, in their on-site um, uh, uh, kitchen? I was going to call it a restaurant, but it's not a restaurant. It's the kitchen. I, I don't think we can. Um, Damn. But, but if you are looking for uh, good prices on all your hobby-related <laughs> stuff, check out the link in the description <laughs> or the QR code that is on your screen right now. Um, first of all, Very everyone, nice. <clears throat> well, what have we been up to hobby-wise in the last week? Well. I've been hard at work correcting. I bought a second-hand a mounted ring race because I wanted one for a potential army list. Ooh, there he is. Uh, and I've been hard at work in the last 10 to 15 minutes cutting off all of the uh, previous owner's horrible glue work and putting his arm in the correct position so it doesn't look ridiculous. Um, I'm looking forward to getting some spray down. I've also decided it's finally time to try and expand my Mordor horizons. Um, I'm a big Mordor enjoyer. I've got a bunch of the old uh, metal, well, the made-to-order metal orc archers, which I really like, and I've got eight of them, and I've been, I've been meaning to paint them for bloody ages. So maybe they'll be on the docket next, along with my great beast of Gorgoroth. Nice. So maybe that might rock up in a, a tournament at some point. Nice. Hopefully on nice. this show, on the podium. But, you know, can't promise that. I did the horribly onerous task of painting two models from my list for the last weekend, uh, and then borrowed the other four from David Clubley. Shout um, out I David do Clubley. have not enemy weekend. of the podcast. Yeah, frenemy of the podcast, friends with two and three hosts. Um, uh, we we <clears throat> made up. We're we're besties now. Oh, are you? Three of the three hosts. Do I have to have a beef with him now? Yeah, yeah. that's going to be um, difficult. He's one of my main practice partners. He's going to give me a lovely expose in Earl of Bugle. Oh, nice. <laughs> display, board, display board gate. <laughs> Which one? Oh, has, they have multiple gates. <laughs> all of them. All of them. The gates of Gondwine. Uh-huh. Sorry, Stephen, um, I interrupted you. I was going to say, I've got a big weekend coming up. I'll hopefully get my arms of Thranduil like, mostly done this weekend if things go to plan. By which I mean, if my loving girlfriend badges me enough to paint the models because she wants to, but I definitely don't, which is a bit opposite but we're here for it um moving on to the first event of the weekend which we're going to talk about yeah. that still only counts as one which was a gbhl 80 um down in factorum as previously mentioned uh holds a special place in mine and elliot's hearts um some of the first tournaments we ever won were there uh, best painted was james and simon with their lovely Grey company this you can see in front of you with some alternate sculpts for the elves and the oh. couple of the men. And podium was Ryan Beatty and Mike Arnold in first. Um, they had a Lothlorien Misty Mountain Rivendell um, soup. 
there was Mark O'Brien and Chris Hall in second with Isengard and Easterlings. Uh, reminder that Isengard does not have a U in it, um, as discussed with Dewey earlier. Uh, and mm. in third place was James Harding and Simon Hyatt with their grey company, that you can see in front of you now. Um, yeah. And they were the guys thanks. that won Best Painted. Firstly, uh, most sporting was a four-way tie, which is very factorum. Uh, if you ever go there, which you should if you're in the Bristol Bath area, um, lovely place to play. Uh, you, you go there with a sense of humour. Everyone there is lovely and just speaks volumes to the kind of people that go. Um, thank you very much, Ryan, for sending me the result. Um, we, we're putting this this in as, a, as, as mostly as a thank you um, to yourself because we didn't plan on covering this AT. Um, and that, that kind of brings us on to a little uh, tiny, not announcement, but a discussion point of we will always try and cover tournaments when we have time. If we've got two or more hundreds or hundreds and a competitive event from another region, we will probably cover those while also talking about maybe the results of other 80s and 90s if we have time. As we say, some weekends there's like five tournaments. We can't cover them all. Um, but we will always do our best to give shout outs where relevant though. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, we'll be it's... prioritizing competitive um, tournaments where possible, which would mean 90s and 100s and things. Yeah. Now that's not a slight against 80s. I love 80s. Uh, they're the only tournament that I can actually win on my own. Um, and it, it's always a good vibe at an 80. Um, but in terms of uh, helping the wider community learn about lists which are winning, um, talking about a 500 point Gilgalad Kierden list, which has four might and pretending it's good. No, we're not doing it that. It does have a lot of fight value and also plus one to wound spears, though. Do do let us know in the comments if you think this is a whack idea and you actually would prefer to kind of... We could cover all the tournaments, but we have to go into less detail. We'd have to be yeah, brief. Yeah, time is... So, time so let is us know what you want, kind of. The time of actually recording, we don't want these to go over an hour. Time of kind of putting the points together. We're churning through interns at a, a rapid pace. Yeah. Um, it, it is also worth noting that we can't always get the um we don't always have spies at events to get us the uh, results and painted and whatnot yeah um so sometimes if you don't see an event covered that's why um the either we haven't events. had the foresight or well, yeah foresight at the elder doesn't yeah. always land now what i would so, say is the more the more events there are the more difficult it is and the more work it is to get all together so that's worth considering yeah um just to so bring it back Steve, to the sorry, topic no. a little bit here, sorry. Um, I'm a pretty, I was just appreciating some of these miniatures. I see they've got the plastic Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn, but then the rest of these, I think, are third party of some description. That's definitely not an Eladan or Elrahir model I've seen before for the great. They're much company. nicer than the actual Eladan and Elrahir models. I quite like them. I quite like them. The dynamic Elrahir. poses. <laughs> it's yeah. nice. I, I thought for a second it was a converted version of the. Um, plastic Elrond, but that's pretty clearly a third party miniature, I, I think. But it looks nice. Yeah, the, the gold banding is slightly different on the armor. Yeah, that would be the clue. Yeah. Sorry, John, you were. So, Stephen, a minute ago, you mentioned spies <clears throat> at events. We actually had a spy across the pond uh, in the Atlantic who I think reached out to David Farmer. Yes, so, I'll let was... Dave cover our next <clears throat> event. Yeah. So, this is. Um, a, a listener and me member of the Guardians Discord, uh, Alex Anglin, mm -hmm. reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in covering um, a GBHL 90, essentially equivalent. Um, it's from Calgary in Canada. Um, he was keen to get more ears potentially on this scene because... I mean, this wasn't a massive tournament, but some of the, some of the attendees had to travel about four hours because Canada is bloody massive. Um, so growing the scene and letting more people know about that there are tournaments going on in the area was part of the goal. Now, this was interesting. This was a 650-point tournament, two days, five games, only 16 It was up to 24 players, but only 16 attendees. <laughs> uh, it was within pool veto, and pool five was not played. Now, I, if I should have checked this, but I don't remember which one pool five is. It's the top of my head. So let's have a quick look in my match play guide. That is uh, maneuvering. So Storm the Camp Recon, Divide and Conquer, which I mean, I guess they just rolled them and played them in order. Yeah. Uh, but I think the lack uh, of maneuvering scenarios is reflected in the 
some of the armies will see when the maybe. success. But I mean, I, I would imagine they didn't know that that wasn't going to be maneuvering before the tournament. I think it was probably just roll the pools as they came up, although I, I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, and then you veto within pool, so you can mitigate for certain factors. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the lists. Yeah, Who, before well. before we look at this, what you what are your guys' general thoughts on veto? Do you like veto? Do you think veto in pools is better than kind of random veto? What I, were the points of this? Sorry, what were the points of this tournament? Do we know? Uh, six hundred fifty. Six fifty. Sorry, you did say it's not written in yeah. front of me, so it immediately dropped down my bag. I'm expecting to see Goblin Town and Lake Town without having looked at the results. So, I think yeah. that's my issue my only issue with veto i really enjoy it because it lets me take lists that suck at a single scenario yeah um like if you go into seize the prize without march and without magic and without cavalry you're gonna have a bad time yeah i think uh it disproportion vetoes disproportionately buff up certain lists but at the same time i think variety is the spice of life i think occasionally playing veto tournaments is a great way to expand the the way the game feels uh, this is probably disproportionately more of an issue for players like myself who go to a lot of tournaments. I think the fewer you go to, maybe Vito feels a bit better because you're more able to run the thing that you like and not get uh, screwed by the scenarios quite so much. Uh, because obviously, if you if I'm going to you know six tournaments in three or four months and I know that I can just chance it and take a less a list that might get screwed in a scenario or in a matchup, I can then say, okay, I'll just run my my you know all mounted rohan or whatever and then know that then maybe i'll have a uh maybe i'll have a, a few a tournament where the luck just goes against me but if i'm only able to play one tournament every three months i maybe would take i i'd fall back towards taking something much more secure and much less likely to get screwed by things but that also means that if you have veto you can that expands the amount you can play but basically if you play a lot of tournaments i think veto becomes less appealing and if you mm. play not many tournaments, Vito becomes more appealing. So smaller scenes, I think, gravitate towards Vito so that people can use what they want. At least that's my read on it anyway. Yeah. I think that's pretty pretty insightful. That's why we have you on the pod, Dave. I talk too much. <laughs> I think the lack of uh, the manoeuvring scenarios also means there's some armies which really excel at those. Or Yeah. Like what, Stephen? Yeah. Where any models with any models with free marches. Or with lots, lots of mobility. I was going to say Spider Queen. Suddenly he just screams at you and goes, ha, I've won recon. GG. Yeah, kind what, of. What sort of armies do you think would benefit from not having the uh, maneuvering stories? Well, dwarves. again, I... Yeah. Dwarves. Dwarves. Yeah. Funny oh, you should okay. say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so our third Thanks. place list was Erebor Reclaimed, as Stephen alluded to unwittingly. Uh, 33 dwarfs, got Old Man Dane, King Iron, King Under the Mountain, two goat riders, four iron hills with crossbow and spear, five iron hills with spear, and six iron hills dwarfs. Then you've got Dwarlin, champion of Erebor, with two iron hills goat riders, four iron <laughs> hills dwarfs with crossbow and spear, four iron hills dwarfs with spear, and four iron hills dwarfs. I quite like this list. Yeah, I'm looking I will, at this I will one say... thinking, oh God. That's a lot of go riders as well. That's that yeah. is four. That's too which many. Is a lot. I don't think it's too many, but what I would say is there's another thing. This is a little thing, but there's three points left over. Just give spears. He's got mm. he's got nine on his dwarves without spears. Just give three of them spears. Especially when the ones with just shield, you have to go out of your way to get those. Um, yeah, they, yeah. You have to get them custom or convert them. Personally, I'm yeah. looking at this list thinking. You should be 34 models, but <laughs> it's probably fussy to drop a goat, right? That's, that's uh, swallowing with what, the, wait, no, that's swallowing think, without goat. Yeah, you can't take the goat in this list. Um, oh, no, sorry. Swallowing can't smart. have the goat in this. Uh, this this is so, yes. but confusingly, um, Erebor Reclaimed has two versions. This is the version that is colloquially known as Old Dane version. So a king under the mountain Dane as opposed to Lord of the Iron Hills Dane. And this version, he gets the army bonus where a six inch banner effect for everything with Erebor, but then also the Iron Hills dwarves all get the Erebor keyword as well. So there's no banner in this, but I think you wouldn't miss it. 
there are a couple of scenarios where you might, but again, it's veto, so you're never going to have to play them if you don't want to. It's kind of slow, but this has got, what, nine crossbows, eight crossbows, pretty decent. I agree with you, Stephen. I'd drop one of the Goat Riders for a... Because you've got the spare points as well. You can have another two dwarves. Um, yeah. Max out your crossbows, probably. If you're, if you're going to have crossbows, I think you probably want to max them here. But at the same time, like, eight is fine. And Dwalin on foot is extremely killy. He's strength he's... five with plus one, and he has four attacks on foot. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's just such a beat stick. Like, he will yeah. kill two models every turn about... 75 percent of the time on average he walks through like even d7 models yeah pretty comfortably and he's great at killing heroes so this isn't this isn't like uh super duper spicy or anything but it's just solid and actually i think a lot of goats is actually quite good because they have this annoying ass rule where when they charge on a five plus anything infantry they hit gets knocked prone so you have an opportunity with that many goat riders you have the opportunity to use them like heavy cavalry and speculatively try and fish for knockdowns they have lances too strength four with lances is actually i don't think there's any other cab in the game apart from camel riders that get that which is um actually extremely potent because if yeah. you run into d6 especially fight three d6 you just run it down do we yeah, think this is the that... Old Dane is better than, say, Thorin King under the mountain. They're different the with, in this list. Yeah, they're different. The problem with Thorin King under the mountain is you lose the reroll, so you need a banner. Because Thorin King under the mountain would only affect Dwalin if you swapped him out. Because the old that version, Iron Hills Dwarves, still have the Iron Hills keyword. Ali, yeah, so Ali makes Thorin the case. Ali banners. makes the case that this should really be a different mm -hmm. army list. He calls it the Kingdom of the Lonely Mountain, just to differentiate it. Yeah, Lord of the Rings era, Erebor reclaimed. I've heard it yeah. mentioned. In there. the um, in <laughs> the issue, the real issue with dwarves actually is they have so many army lists that get cut up pointlessly. I mean, see also Kingdom of Khazadum and Kingdom of Moria are sort of the same list, but not really, depending on hero choices. And this mm. is the same Erebor reclaimed. I don't know why dwarves get this and other lists don't, but there you go. Well, guys. Anyway, I like this list actually. I think this is pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, we've seen that dwarves can kind of benefit from maybe no maneuvering scenarios. Let them on cook. The list. Uh, so, our second place list is a different flavor of dwarves. Is it going to be King of Khazad in first place? I really hope it is. Marden, or something like Marden. Marden only, baby. <laughs> Just Marden. No one could possibly uh, succeed. So, with Kevin O'Kane took second place, bringing an army of Thrall. He's got Granddaddy Thor with three Grim Ham 13 Grim Hammers, sorry, who are upgraded to Guardians of the King. Very good. Young Thorin with the Oaken Shield, six warriors of Erebor with shield, five warriors with shield and spear, one warrior with just a spear. And he's got a captain of Erebor with six warriors with shield and spear, four warriors with shield. This this guy's um this guy has I, I want to say he should have some more spear warriors, but he's got 38 models, which at 650 when they're all dwarves is really, really nice. Um, the reason yeah, why I, I think he should have more spears is behind the Guardians of the King, but he's got enough spears to support Thorin and the I, I I would agree with you. I think um, drop one model. 37 is still great. Uh, also, that warrior with spear, no shield. No, 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 no. No, no, Everyone no. Must be D7. Give shield. Always D7. give shield. <laughs> yeah, D7 and then 8 for Thorin and 9 for Thor. So yeah, definitely do that. Um, this is good. It's got marks, it's got everything. Again, you can save points on the banner because Thor is a six inch banner because apparently that's the only army bonus dwarves are allowed to have um and uh yeah an underrated thing thorin's to arm special rule with grimmer mm -hmm. ha grimmer hammers a guardians of the king grim. is actually pretty good i mean it's not fantastic but plus one strength when you consider they can also piercing strike you can get like mini dwarves if you want you can get D6, uh, sorry, strength six, and it's just pretty sketchy. Only within three of Thorin, but it is all Erebor dwarves, so that also applies to your captains. And yeah. so it can get pretty scary pretty quick. I mean, captains have axes, strength four basic, up to strength five, up to strength six. Anytime you get, if you get a good turn off with the, the two arms, you can really, really sell it. Get your yeah. heroes in, do a heroic combat, and put Thorin where he's most needed, and you just absolute chop. It's he's also scary. An, an exceptional profile for his cost. Well, Thorin. Yeah, Thorin, I think it's very good. Young Thorin Oakenshield, even Thorin's company, Thorin. 
for for his points cost is incredibly good. Yeah, he's, he's got, got some good bits and bobs. He's fight six. He's D eight. Three attack, three's three wounds. Everywhere. High courage. Threes everywhere. Strike defense. The oaken strength. shield also it has yeah. just like that n- niche little special rule for when you need to hold something up. Um, yeah, yeah, shielding so you roll six dice to win the fight, and you can still make a still make a strike. Particularly irritating if you happen to be like. Fishing for a for a wound on um like a ah. horse or something. If yeah. someone charges you, you just shield and then you win the roll off because you got the six and they're fight six as well. And then you just poke their horse with your oaken shield. It's very annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, for an oaken shield, the the main thing he's lacking is any kind of additional damage output other than the arms, which I already explained. Um, which is only a three inch bubble, by the way, is not fantastic. So this list could maybe do with some plus one to wound in there, but actually, it's got. 15 strength four models and a ton of bits and bobs like this is just going to crush by weight of numbers and most enemy heroes if they don't have plus one or strength five are going to take a long time to get through that many d7 models yeah. and it's got 13 throwing axes just to really hate be a hater yeah it's pretty nice i, I think army of thor is actually underrated the main thing it lacks is like x factor is what i call it like it doesn't have game winning capability in a losing situation a lot of the time like you don't have that pound a punch ability you just have to sort of say all right i hope i start rolling better so that's one of the reasons why it's not super competitive but i do think army of thrall has a really niche strong a really strong niche in like team formats um where you can get extremely large numbers of d7 which is great to throw in front of something that's trying to chop through you fast and you're like nope here's 45 d7 models to deal with right. yeah it's a good summary um right steven what's your prediction for first place uh goblin town or kingdom of kazadim slash uh moria kingdom of moria okay you're absolutely wrong so you can read this one out <laughs> of course of <laughs> course uh it's Mordor Ser- Serpent Horde. Uh, it's Suladan, uh, Armored Horse, the usual Serpent Riders. Six, wait, six Serpent Riders? What on earth? What on tarnation? Uh, this isn't Abrican, your mother's barn door. Merchant Guard, two Watch of the Karna, uh, a Haradrim King with Horse and War Spear, a Haradrim Raider with War Spear, and 12 Haradrim Warriors with Bow with Poison Arrows. You know, what I love about this Serpent Horde list is that I don't have to go through 12 different warrior types in each warband. Um, and then it's the Betrayer on Horse with six Black Nums and six Random Alts with Spear. I'll be honest, looking at it, Milo Likey. So this mad lad has got six Spears, and that's it. Sorry, well, I mean, technically he's got more Spears on the Raider and the six Seven Riders, but you'd have to dismount. Oh, and the yeah. King as well. You'd have to dismount to use them as Spears. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't really get this, to be honest. I, I see, like, the Betrayer is not getting great value here in Mordor. Yeah, you've got 12 you've models. Out your, just, yeah. You've not maxed out your Harad bows. So the Mordor stuff isn't benefiting from the Betrayer's presence, apart from the Terror and the Harbinger. And then the, the Bowfire is like, the Bowfire is good. And the, the Betrayer makes it even better, but you only have 12 bows, which in a list at 650, like a Harad list like this, if you just took the Betrayer from the Harad army list, you could pretty comfortably be dropping 17 bows if you put one of them on the hero, I reckon. I, admittedly, this has got a nice D6 line, although I noticed some Moranans don't have shields, so they are a bit softer. And yeah, other than that little bit, you don't really have a battle line. Having said that, this may be intended to be some sort of a hammer and anvil type list. So you, you use your Harad Warriors to force people to come to you. You have a bit of an anvil and then Black Numenorians and the Moranans, and then you have quite a lot of cavalry. I mean, he's got, he's got eight cav with lances plus Suladan, that's including the king. I mean, that's quite a lot. And 40 models total is also quite a lot. I just think this list is sort of caught between two worlds, but I mean, he won the tournament, so... And I think he was the only undefeated player. Yeah, he yeah. Was. I wonder if Five this was... He's, he's, Serpent Riders are not terrible at taking out dwarves. Any lance cavalry against dwarves yeah. is, is not the worst. And they're fight four. They've got the poison on them. Um, it, is, it does feel like this list has an identity crisis, in my opinion. 
Um, yeah. Now, it, it, I always feel bad when I look at a list which has won a tournament and I think I don't like it. I think it could be better this way. But to be honest... You don't well, like I, it. You think uh, it could be better this way. Ex- exactly. I think it could be better if it was pure Serpent Horde or if it was Barn Door style Serpent Horde Mordor. But yeah, like play Mordor. into the... Play into the yeah. I think for me the, the 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 weak link is almost a betrayal. I feel like if you're going to do the Mordor Wraith, I think you would do better with the Shadow, Shadow Lord. Shadow Lord, yeah. It's the same kind of thing. You then, then can you're... leverage your you can leverage your bows because people have to come to you because not only do you have good bows with rerolls and good amounts of them, you've also got yeah. the Shadow Lord effect. Um, so you wouldn't you wouldn't have to change this very much to make it more into a list that I, I would like, I think. Even if you want to keep it this style, where you've got the Siladan and the Hered King, what I would do there, I think, is run... Swap the Betrayer for the Shadow Lord. Uh, drop a Serpent Rider down to a, just a regular Serpent Guard or a Spearman. Drop the mer- Merchant Guard down to regular Spearman, just so you have guys to put behind your Warriors. And then you can keep the same number. Or even just drop the Serpent Rider down to a, a Serpent Guard, and then you can upgrade... You can throw some spears on some of the bowmen because that gets you an extra five points. Yeah. Um, I think because yeah, six serpent rider, six troop cav is crazy. Uh, sorry, seven troop cav he's got. I think for me that's excessive. You don't, you, especially when there's no maneuvering. Although, again, I don't think they knew that going into the tournament. I think, that, I would, I think um, this is, I think this is a cool list. I think it's sort of like 60% of the way to completion of this concept. Um, I think this is definitely something like I actually do like lots of infant like I, I realize this playing against Stoey's uh Stephen Horde. I think spam like extra cav with lances, basic cav is actually un- underrated. I think I personally underrate it. I think I go for numbers generally and don't take that much warrior cavalry. And actually if you can get cheap, so particularly Serpent Riders and I think um Knights of Minas Tirith are yeah. the the obvious choices below 15 points and they have I and mean, i think uh royal guard in pure rohan are good for this as well um keeping it cheap and giving him like a lot of lance cav gives you so much like objective fighting control because you can pretty much always guarantee you're going to get your charging cav versus single enemy model <clears throat> and if you do that two dice versus probably one or maybe two if they shield you can then you have a good chance of winning and then a very good chance of just stabbing them to death with your lance you also have the um, obviously a cavalry charging into a on foot hero is it's usually quite threatening. But let's say you're a strength yeah. four cavalry charging into a d7 hero, you're probably not going to wound them if they lose. They're not too bothered yeah. about spending might. But if you've got a lance and you're going to fives mm, with exactly. four dice, you could just kill that hero. So you yeah. suddenly got this pressure to force the opponent to spend their might to win the fight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had some success using. Uh, a large amount of Rivendell Knights purely because it was for points purposes to mm. fill out warbands. Um, and what it really I came down to... I really good at this as well. Yeah, I mean, they're really expensive at 22 points, but, well, 22 points mm. with shield, you don't take them without shield unless you're at bar. Um, mm. Hashtag water. Um, but they cut through dwarves like butter. Um, and yeah. Yeah, if, if you've got what is essentially a cheaper Rivendell Knight, albeit almost half the points um, a cheaper river don't like with a lot of the things missing yeah, yeah. With, with, with the fight with the fight and the armor and the bow missing but they're there just for the killing purposes you swoop in once you've baited your opponent towards you um, yeah i do like the concept and it's very like actual military tactics kind of style yeah of, so that well i do like that funny you mentioned that because uh, alex lois hockham and discord was saying that he had a real sort of soft spot for trying to recreate specific military tactics as he was taught, which I think is interesting. <clears throat> also worth noting, by the way, 650, there was an Arnor player who had max ranges and didn't end up doing super well. But um, I think Arnor at 650 with no Warhorn and that many models is just nasty. Yeah. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, thank you very much for sending us the results. If you yeah. are and someone overseas... Um, please, you know, drop us a message, drop us a Discord, YouTube yeah, comment, whatever. Just we're to say, interested in global we, meta. We're interested in global meta because we are very um, barn door pilled over here. Just um, for any international viewers that don't know what barn door is, uh, it's what literally that. everybody in the UK calls Mordor Siladan, uh because it's farmer Mordor, barn door. Yeah. 
Um, final, and to the final, um, <laughs> uh, Alex asked me to mention that if, basically, if you're listening to this and you know anyone who's in Western Canada or Northwestern USA who's interested in coming to Calgary for tournaments, uh, hit him up on Discord at Rowdy Canadian or email at Calgary MESBG Slow Grow at gmail.com. That's all one word. So Calgary MESBG Slow Grow at gmail.com. I'll, I'll put the uh, email. In yeah, the put it in the thingy. description. And and making those kind of like you're thinking about playing the game and then making that leap to actually playing the game, that's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Well, I, um, yeah. So I'm sure that, that the Calgary lads better. are good, are good lads. So, yeah, the Canadians, yeah. so they're they have good craft. They must be. They must be lovely. Surely, I mean, I can't possibly verify that, but <laughs> you know, Alex right. told me, and therefore I believe him. Let's move on to <laughs> our biggest tournament of the weekend. It was City of Steel, a GBHL <laughs> hundred held in Sheffield, Northern England, uh, ran by Ali Prince. There were sixty-five players who competed across six games at 700 points with special banners. Who wants to elaborate on on special banners? I'll do a rundown. So the premise of this tournament was Ali is a fan. This is Ali King, uh, just to be clear. Um, He is a fan of uh, Sharp, the TV show, and was watching it, and the discussion of the King's Colors comes up. And obviously his name is Ali King, so he's like, aha, this is... That's something I could I could base a tournament around that. Um, so he suggested uh, the idea of the tournament is uh, if you ran a pure army list, um, so as in a single army list with no allies, you could take a, a free six-inch banner with a, a variety of possible effects that could go on any one of your troops, uh, a single wound troop. Uh, the, the six banners were, uh, there was a one that gave blinding light to everyone within six, there was one that gave Harbinger of Evil to every uh, effect within 12. There was one that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there was one that uh, provided Fortify Spirit effect to everyone within six. There was one that uh, provided a plus one buff for five value to all infantry, uh, not infantry, all troops, so no heroes within six. There was one that, uh, ooh, there was one that gave a point of might back to every hero, sorry, not every hero, so a, a hero within three inches. The banner itself was still a six-inch effect, but the, the might buff value was within six, which is similar to the Royal, Royal Standard of Rohan, but better because it was just any might back. Um, spoilers, but that was a very, very popular banner. Um, and oh, can I, I can't remember the last one. I did this all the top of my head. What was the sixth one? Can you guys remember? I think you've named them all, haven't you? No, there were six. There was, six. There no, was right, that Fight was Value. There was Fearless. There was Harbinger. Fearless, that's the one oh, I did. Yeah. Okay. There's one, yes, that was also a relatively... So in terms of popularity, the most popular by far was, was the Might Banner. I think maybe two-thirds of everyone took that one because a lot of people correctly ascertained that Might is always valuable no matter your matchup. Um, some people decided they wanted to run an army that normally would have a vulnerability to shooting and would take that. Some people would, you know, uh, as a mitigation, some people would took... Uh, armies that have a weakness with courage and took that you know it's a it's a clever thing um and i really enjoyed it and it meant that we saw an all i think um there was also there was another one there was a bonus tournament point if you captured the enemy's king's colors so the banner rules were slightly different which meant that if you killed them in combat they would not have the option to pass it to another model like you normally do with banners the killer would be would get first dibs to grab it essentially which so you meant could yoink to... with spears, which was hilarious. Which is fun. Uh, and then if you'd stolen the enemy king's colors, they had the opportunity to get them back off you uh, as a light object. And if they got it back on one of their own models, they'd then get their banner back, essentially. Which is actually a very, very cool concept for a tournament. And yeah. lots of little stuff like you got your whole army gets minus one courage if your banner has been stolen, that kind of thing. Um, because very, the very man cool. who loses the king's colors loses the king's friendship. Exactly. We love Sharp. Um, <laughs> so, and also it meant the army building was interesting because it was essentially a free, I mean, six inch banner, so it's better than 25 points, but it meant that you could build a little bit more aggressively at 700 points, which is what, how much it was. Um, the scenarios were known ahead of time, which were Lords of Battle, Divide and Conquer, a Fog of War, Recon, Breakthrough, and, uh, To the Death. So finishing with To the Death as the, the classic capture the banner scenario, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Really enjoyable tournament. 
Um, and it meant that I think almost everybody, I think there were two people who took legendary legions, but almost everybody took a, yeah. a pure list, which was the idea essentially. There was uh, quite a lot of Mordor, uh, quite a lot of Angmar, <laughs> some Minas Tirith, lots of different variety, but uh, I think Lothlorien was very popular, Isengard was popular, a yeah. lot of army lists that do a lot of things. Anyway, let's look at some lists I've waffled on. All right. Uh, before we look at lists, so most sporting oh. went to Matt Hudson. Mm -hmm. And best painted went to John Partridge. We've got some that photos is. of the, intern. uh, uh, the intern's army. Uh, the not actually from... Times. Will we edit it out? Who knows? Um, <laughs> that's that's a photo. Obviously, I can't win anything without this playboard. You had Shagrat in your army, did you? No, no is, and I didn't have the mouth. <laughs> uh, but I this didn't is... take any photos, but... These. I also didn't have Philodan, but yeah. Hey -ho. Uh, Basically, it's important to show the display board. Yeah, that and the was banner. my banner. Uh, you've got poor old strong up Frodo being saved by uh, Sam and Orkama. I'm not sure the uh, photography does me any favors there. Uh, I think Doth um, Monk, who, oh. I was going to say there was a separate competition for best king's colors so we were awesome encouraged one. to do a custom yet yeah, john cleaned up all three of the best painted awards um but yeah you were encouraged to come up with custom king's colors not everybody did but uh john roasted the occasion spectacularly with a crucified frodo yeah <laughs> <laughs> what better opportunity to show some of the new models are painted just for this army um we like being quite self-indulgent here on the podcast. So I made sure to kind of... Look at those balls. Those water you gotta, balls. you got to paint all the details. Uh, I had a fish. It was quite fun. Um, and then this is some more photos of the display board because... Featuring Charlie. Uh, I just that like is to show off. A yeah. cat belonging to a friend of ours. Yeah. yeah. He's lovely the cat. fantastic cat. Lovely friend. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Shout out uh, Matt and Jess. That's that's enough kind of self uh, promotion. Let's uh, oh. do some more self promotion <laughs> hey. for somebody else on the pod. <laughs> what? Who could this it's, be? It's David Farmer or Dave Farmer. Yeah, uh, that's right. So Dave, who came up with this list all by himself. Um, I don't know why you're joking about that because I definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> but yeah, it's the Witch King on horse with a crown, three might, two world, two fate. Very budget as a ring race, as far as Witch Kings go. Uh, then we've got six Black Numenorians, six Morenans with Spirit Shield, one of whom has taken the King's colors. I see this has given it up to 2725, but obviously that was for free in this tournament. Three trackers. Then we've got Shadow Lord with two Wild Riders with Throwing Spear and three trackers. And he's on a horse. And we've got Gothmog, who had Wild and Shield. And then six Black Numenorians, six Brandon Orcs with Spear and Shield, and three Orc Trackers. So essentially, 12 Black Nums were backed up by Moranans, nine Trackers, a couple of Warg Riders, and then the Trifecta of Witch King, Shadow Lord, Gothmog. You, you built this being, list um, knowing exactly which scenarios were going to come up. Yeah. Um, essentially, yes. Yeah, And also looking at the current meta going, ah, crossbows. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I looking at this, I, I, every time I was sort of wondering about taking army lists with the blinding light banner, thinking that'd be nice, but then I kept coming back around to, but if I just take an army that has blinding light or the Shadow Lord, then I can have the might banner and also, you know, and essentially also blinding light. So, yeah. and given the fact that capturing the king's colors was worth a tournament point, I decided I wanted a list that was going to be good at that, and this. This is, this is good at that. Um, double double casters will always be good at that kind of thing. I captured every King's Colors in the games that I won. In the game I lost, I got absolutely smashed. So no chance to capture any colors in that one. But um, yeah, it was it was very uh, a very solid list. Gothmog is expensive for what he offers. Unfortunately, it's only thirty eight models. Let me say only. That's a decent number. But it was. I think I started out at parity or slightly slightly behind in a lot of my games, which with this list, you have to kill a bit to catch up. But it does do everything. You've got March, you've got a couple of strikers, you've got... Um... So the logic behind Gothmog was essentially Master of Battle because this tournament, 
mic was going to be a lot more plentiful than usual um, because the mic banner existed and two thirds of all the players took it pretty much, including yeah. me, because it allows you to be crazy with stuff like channeling black darts and things, just stuff you wouldn't normally do, calling marches when you don't have any particular plan with what you want to do with them, just to see what your opponent will do, that kind of stuff. Because yeah. there's no reason Mar- not to, because it's for Marching free. double casters is really disgusting. Yes. Um, for various reasons, <clears throat> including compelling into like protect your heroes from shooting, uh, and then you know heroic combating and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, the Gothmog Master battle. I know it was something that we br- very briefly talked about for mm-hmm. list building, where you were saying using master battles can be pretty good. You also, yeah. shadow laws can be pretty good, which can is always good. Um, mm-hmm. And if you've got a free might point every turn when you're casting. You can quite comfortably just one dice things with a reroll and a mic point in your pocket every turn. And just yeah. yeah. You get the effectiveness of the Witch King, but even better because free might and free channeling. Um Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of you can a lot of value to be and you, you also built this list, and this isn't a slight, so I'm sorry for bringing it up. You brought put built this list going, the Shadow Lords wall band in Divide and Conquer will be the one that I stick on the other side. The other two will march up to the center. Um, yeah. which I think is, is something that when you mentioned it to me I was like yes that's really good knowing that scenario is coming up I yeah. will do a similar thing with my list um, and I know quite a few other people have, have learned that if you know Divide and Conquer is coming up you have one mm-hmm. warband with something fast uh, which is preferably small and then you have a warband with your leader and the yeah. banner and march exactly um, so that's it doesn't have to be your leader that does that, but your main battle line warbands and march should be on one side. And with this, like the tactic is solid, it does work. Um, the reason I lost that game, unfortunately, was I got the worst corners and then roll offs didn't go my way. So I wasn't able to get into the middle for to fight for position at all, which is unfortunate. But it does happen. That's why we play dice games. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. Anyway. So let's on. have a look at Second place, we've had one familiar name on the podium. I'm sure listeners will recognize this name as well. It's Mr. Jake Rawson. He's okay. the Isengard again. He's got 42 lads, <coughs> Rasku with four crossbows, a demo team with an extra flaming brand, four pikes, and a pike who was carrying his king's colors. And he's got Maher with five more crossbowmen, six more pikes, and a Crabane for that unbelievable mobility gore of iron skin leads one wild man of dunland four more crossbowmen six pikes and another crabane and then rounding it out he's got an isengard ballista so i think 14 or 13 uruk bows plus two shots from brass crossbows yeah crossbows plus a ballista so solid amount I mean, of shooting and he took them did jay take the mic banner yes. yeah he did this is fine list i i saw this before the tournament i thought it was i wasn't sure about it i think for me the inclusion of moher is an interesting choice he is extremely vulnerable um but i don't think jake ran into any shadow lords um uh, at this uh tournament so uh, well, at least i don't that might not be true but I think this this list specifically, I remember thinking that would be very vulnerable to Shadow Lord d- double caster, like the kind of list I use, because this has three heroes who are one will hmm. and lesser might. Um, he and ran Rasmus into Lost Lorien in uh, round four. True, that was recon though, which is a bit less yeah. uh, of a of a game where you're just setting up on the lines and having a scrap. There's a few more variables to be had there. But, um, yeah, no, I don't like Brasco as the leader. I, still, I understand why he is, because of those three, he's the one you pick as the leader just every, just because, because he's the guy who does the most without being in danger. But he's so vulnerable. Um, he's D5, one, two wounds, one fate. One fate, D5, two wounds. I mean, they all are. So that you have, you don't have great choices. But, yeah, I... I I don't dislike the list. I, I clearly he's done well with it. He went he went five and one, same as me, but also managed to get all six banners, which is impressive. I thought I actually would have thought this list would struggle with that. So I assume he prioritized it tactically. Um, maybe using the bomb to blow a hole to get access to the to the banners. 
Another thing that was interesting, by the way, is obviously when the banners are prone, they don't get any of the bonuses. So the ballista actually does have an interesting purpose there in that you can, if you can knock the banner prone, you can deny your opponents a might. I did notice a lot of siege engines at this tournament. I think a lot of people realized that sticking your might banner next to a siege engine allows you to mitigate some of the blinding lights effectiveness because you're essentially fishing for fives rather than sixes every turn, uh, which is horrible to play against. Who um, obliterated me using that. He did, although apparently <laughs> your blinding light didn't help you out there, mate. Well, yeah. Ooh, should we look at our... Oh, sorry. Game also, list? shout out Stuart McLean because he bought me for Proof of Crisps. Uh, thank you yeah. very much for that. I think he also brought... He bought me some big hoops. Yeah, he bought you some big hoops. So, big shout solemn, out, Stuart. Solemn respect for that. And he yeah. kindly didn't bring me anything because he knows I'm on a diet. So, yeah. shout out for that. great guy. Next time, bring Stephen two Twixes. <laughs> yeah, but Twi- right. Twixes. Our How many winning Twixes list. I apologize for that horrible catapult. <laughs> oh. Our winning list from the event <laughs> is another household name, Mr. Mm. Jakob Cockmouth. He took Big. the Blinding Light banner with his 44 what model Angmar list. He's got a Witch King with three might, 14 will, th- three fate. <laughs> 13 fate. Whoa. 33 fate. <laughs> uh, a horse, crown of Morgul, one Deadmar Spectre, an orc warrior with spear carrying the king's colors, eight uh, orcs with shield, eight orcs with spear, birder, two Deadmar Spectres, three orcs with shield, two orcs with spear, an orc captain on warg with three warg riders with shield, and a shade with six warriors with shield and six with spear. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty good. I like this. He, I so say, the king's colors he chose was um, the blinding light. So he essentially was telling me earlier today that he essentially took the. He rolled the dice and was like, "If I play against any of these mortal lists, I'll lose." But and he didn't. He took the risk and he didn't play any mortal lists. So the shade um, and the blinding light meant that he was able to go up against Isengard, even at Lords of Battle, where any wounds done are going to be very hard to, to mitigate because you basically just have to slog up the board. But this is a slow list. Like he was saying, like this was a list that was built to deal with the fact that everyone is going to have infinite might. This is a list that doesn't need to go first. This is a list that just rocks up, pops the shade on, and then just very slowly grinds. Um, pretty much the only thing I'd consider changing on this is I, I think putting the banner on a specter is like an opportunity one can use here. But having said that, if it was take the effort to convert, you know. Actually, the other thing is, you kind of want it in the middle of your battle line as well. So maybe you want your spec because it's the blinding light banner. Maybe you are happy to have your specters running around on the flanks going after objectives because they're courage six. I saw a few Angmars with the courage banner and I saw a few Angmars with the might banner and this one came out on top. Also, I want to point out that all three of the podium have won GBH 100s this year, which is interesting. He also played um, two other Angmar players, I believe both of which had the might banner. Uh, yeah, which is just like so. the ultimate flex. Or he yeah. did have the shade, which is very helpful. But well, does the shade do anything against opposing Angmar? It does. Yeah, it affects yeah, enemy Angmar. So it affects it's... enemy. Uh, it affects anything that's not friendly Angmar. Friendly Angmar, Rip yeah. Cave trolls. Yeah, gone mm-hmm. too soon. No. Wag riders. Actually, dismounted Angmar wag rider wags. Fine, wild wags. Hell no. Yeah. Interestingly enough, actually, I'm just looking <laughs> at a few of the other Angmar players. They all had a lot of Angmar mirror matches. So Matt Lingard, for example, he had two uh, Angmar mirror matches. Um, I think uh, Natalie also had a couple. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's look at how this has affected the year's podium stats. Mm-hmm. So we've added a few more hundreds to the list. Isengard is... Coming out on top with Eisenshard. four. Spelling's hard. Um, that is fine. That is correct. I'm just <laughs> mocking you. Uh, so yeah, Eisengar is kind of the uh, the leader at the moment. Mordor is starting to creep back up to kind of top of the pack like we saw last me, year. Maybe. Angmar doing well. Uh, Army of Lake Town, no success this weekend, no but still kind of on top. Minas yeah, Tirith is still dominating. 90s. I mean, if Lake Town could have been a rogue choice this weekend, Courage Banner, 700 yeah. points, I think that would have been pretty oh, good. Blinding Light Banner wouldn't have been the worst. 
Well, I mean, play it like Goblin, Goblin Town, like the Goblin Town with Courage banner. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, shout out Pete Harvey, by the way. Had a wonderful game against him. Yeah, he... he narrowly missed the podium. Um, and yeah. He captured more King's Colours. Oh. L- lovely guy. Shout out you and Larry. Nice to play against today. Nice. So that's the stats. Let's look at the comments. It's been a quieter week in the uh, YouTube comment section. I don't know. Do you guys all hate the pod now? Are we Must do. not providing enough crack? It's uh, now we've posted a bat wrap again. People are back on that. So people yeah. are happy about the bat, the bat wraps. Yeah. We'll, we'll let the bat wraps dr- die out slowly again and then boom, <laughs> podcast. Uh, so J Max Army's in Middle Earth, fantastic channel. Said crack is never needless. J Mac is Scottish, so I'm not entirely certain which type of crack he's referring to. <laughs> uh, Whoa. It's, no, I was about to say something bad. I'm not going to say that. Oh, That's we're going to get cancelled, aren't we? Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying it. It smacks at the uh, Scottish you're known for, isn't it? Smacking crack. I'm, I'm not and a connoisseur. Is um, statistically Scotland, I think, has a quite serious anyway. use of heroin. So. Yeah. Train spotting. Yeah. Uh, Bingham15 says, big fan of the pod. Had some success at my first tournament, running Isengard at 750 points. Could you recommend a 500-point version? Oh, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, no, you can play at 500. That. If you want to play crossbows at 500, I, I had to think about this earlier when I saw this this comment. You can get Vrasku, Golf and an Orc Captain uh, with no additional gear. Plus twelve crossbows, a couple of wild riders, I think eleven pikes and ten spearmen, orc spearmen, and that's pretty hefty numbers. I think that's what thirty six models, hmm. 30, 38 models maybe. Let me quickly add that up. Bingham, if you go yeah, back that's thirty. Watch... That's thirty eight models. That's pretty. That's pretty good with uh, fourteen crossbow shots. There are other versions you can do, but I think if you're playing Isengard, I think crossbows are kind of the thing that they do better. Yeah. And we'll look at uh, that's no first, better as well, by the way. Have a look at our first episode on the pod where we cover Into the West. Uh, Jay Acharya won a 450-point tournament yeah. with Isaac. That was the list that was quite similar to what I just described, although he had yeah. a ballista. Cool. Uh, free Run DJs says, Denby accused of racism claims, I can't be racist, I have Australian friends. Very Props for remembering his YouTube username. That, that, that's comment, Dirk Chan, by the way. Dirk yeah, it's Dirk Chan. Um, I recognise uh, this for, for those of oh. you not aware, that's a reference to the classic, you're accused of racism and you say, I can't be racist, I have friends that are of whichever ethnic group, uh, similar to homophobia. It was, um, it was me being yeah. funny. Sorry. Mm. Um, Moving swiftly on. <laughs> <coughs> Moving on. What does Robert Stevens say, John? What is your favourite monster in MESBG? I'm glad uh, you asked Robert Stevens 3847. It's yeah, Shelob. Yeah, it's Shelob is the best monster in MSPG. Gullivar. Except for all the times when she's not. I really like Shelob. I think she's actually like a really interesting tech. Um, I think the actual best is probably the Spider Queen. Spider Queen but, is the best, um, yeah. But I think Shelob is underrated and uh, the queen of my heart. So I'm going to try and get her into one of my, uh, maybe an 800 point list coming up soon. Because I love um, her. I really like Moria Dragons. Um, oh, I yeah, to be fair. They are an dope. aficionado of the Cult of the Double Dragon. Uh, shout huh. out James Thrawn and Jamie Giblin. What a uh, timely throw. Yeah. <laughs> Legends sure from the past. Both, I'm sure they both watched. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. God, imagine um, if Jamie Giblin was in our comments. I'd be so oh, happy. I'd be so hyped. Um, yeah. yeah, dragons are really cool because you can customize them. And if you give them every upgrade, they become yeah. Smaug, um, but better. The, they can't have every upgrade. I know, I know they can only and have two. Also, but... also, they're some of the most horribly pointed upgrades in the entire game. Yes. Like genuinely, disgustingly badly pointed. Yeah. Breathe Fire in particular is hysterically poorly pointed. It's yes. like you're like paying 50 points for a three shot shooting attack that you can miss that also interacts with your most important stat. Yeah, no. Also, they're Courage 4. Why are they Courage 4? Make them Courage 6. Or yeah. five, if you want, if you want that, <laughs> yeah. or give uh, them more will, or free will. Dragons, but, but it's deserve about favorites, better. not how to bust them. We don't, don't Guardians, need to, that wouldn't make them busted. That would just make them playable. They're rubbish. Dave, at the if you keep talking, we're gonna have to skip Dewey's comment. Oh God, I keep talking. Do that. Okay. <laughs> 
beardy fluff back, he says. No, go back to Dewey. <laughs> He's my boss. I can't. He's oh, yeah, my Dewey, boss. Dewey He's both of your GBHL bosses. Grand Overlord. He's been on the pod. Give him a break. Yeah. Wait, you guys are getting paid? Yeah. Uh, Guardians yeah, of Wiltshire, like. Dewey Evans says, Hey, all love the podcast, obviously, with three exclamation marks. Uh, he's responding to Stuart McLean's comment about list submission and on, faction fits for long shanks. shanks. Yeah. yeah. Matt asked for lists in his Google form and completely forgot to source it for long shanks, showing great organizational skills from the uh, chairman of the GBHL. Or leak or I mean, I also is. didn't. Uh, I also didn't put my list in long shanks, but this was for the tournament two weeks ago. So you know, understand. Yeah, that really. in defense to Matt, um, who you know doesn't need much defending. Um, his co TO was actually ill that weekend, so he did have to do a lot of stuff on his own. So, oh yeah, I mean, he was doing long shanks the sort of he's doing the old fashioned way. Way it was on long shanks, but he put all the scores on himself. So yeah, I mean, go figure. Nothing really um, wrong with that. Beardy Fluffbag lets us know about his tournament that we covered uh, on a previous episode where Chris Webster did the list challenge. That's if you brought, a, was it a Baggins and a Wizard? Yes. Yeah, you got to pick one of the scenarios for the tournament and he picked Capture and Control. Let Good us choice. know That's which Baggins scenario. and Don't which Wizard. Was it kind of Fluffy Gandalf and Bilbo or... Um, Survivors of Blake Town. Thingy. Maybe. Or was it Saruman and Lobelia Sackville Baggins in some sort of horrible alliance? Saruman and Hobbits better. used to be a thing, right? Uh, I won my very first GBH Show 100 with Saruman and Hobbits. Not I knew that. I was just back giving in, you a chance to brag. Back in 2017. <laughs> Saruman, Randwill and a warband of Wood Elves, and then two, I think it was three warbands of Hobbits. I think I had like, I think it was like 40 something models. Mm. 50, it might have been 50 models, I think, actually. Uh, David Jackson 39 <laughs> says, Surely it's time, time to call a GBHL truce in response to Kylie's throwing gauntlet. Put an yeah. Articon team together consisting of the best GBHL players and accept the challenge is what I feel like. Are. If we did that, that team would definitely win Articon, but that's the fun of it, right? That's the point of band together as the best in the GBHL. If we could put together an actual top, just a GBHL top team, like a Masters team or something, I think not winning Articon would be a poor result if that was what we were going to try and do. Yeah. It's a big claim. It Especially is a big claim, given but, you know. That the, the people who've won Articon in the past, a lot of them would be part of that team anyway. So Yeah, I mean, if you throw together, like, the top nine qualifiers for Masters, for example, for this mm. year, the Masters is in two weeks, so I'm sure we'll talk about it soon. If you took the top nine ranked qualifiers and threw them on an Articon team, I have no doubt that that, would, that team would win Articon. Mm. <clears throat> See what the Aussie's response is. Well, Carson Howard says, I've been listening to a podcast on YouTube from Good Enough Scenery. He's been doing battle company talk throughs for the community rules. They have taken out Rangers of the North and Army of the Dead and split up the Hero Pass into 14 separate ones. Very interesting, and he recommends a listen to everyone on the channel and in the comments if you've got the time. Just don't get, mm-hmm. let it get in the way of listening to the Enna Heroics podcast. Very true. Top answer. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> um, I think uh, Chris Ryder sent me those rules, and I looked through them, and they actually... Yeah, he did. Um, they actually like really fix a lot of the issues that i had with the rules um do they simplify it or make it more complex um they probably make it like 10 percent more complicated which for battle companies balance is is Mm -hmm. fine for the interest Mm -hmm. of balance because basically the path of the warrior was the path you take for literally everyone because it was like you get burly and access to a two-handed weapon you get heroic strike you get plus one attack plus one wound and path of the ranger was like you can re-roll climb check. Access to a sniper rifle. Yeah. Yeah, whereas now now you can buy a barrack fifty Ooh. cal. So um <laughs> so that um oh can't remember what this I did you can't remember where I saw this, but I saw if it had a sniper rifle or something. There oh was but there was a someone who converted a Gandalf the Grey with a um like a 
I think it was an AK-47. I yes. don't remember where I saw it. Yes, yeah. I've seen that. Um, yeah, it was pretty lit. <laughs> Maybe we'll so, try and slot in either the Pippin Sniper Rifle meme, or if Dave can find the photo, we'll pop it on screen. Gotta find the photo. Yeah, I can't, can't find the converted version, <laughs> but I can find the like just edited version online. Um, right. Yeah, shout that. out Carson, by the way, because you're clearly one of our podcasters' uh, super fans, so shout out. That um, brings us to the end of our pod. Yeah. Drop us some more comments. Only 10. I can't say more things to get myself cancelled if you only leave 10 comments. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, say infl- we've, well, we've said some pretty inflammatory things, you know. Yeah, um, so hopefully we'll get some more comments. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. We're fishing for controversy. I can yeah, never uh, go back to Scotland. I mean, there's nothing. Oh, actually, no. I can. There's a lot. There's enough GBH 100s in Scotland. I don't think I can afford to get banned in Scotland. Also, I'm, I really I'm want to go to the there scouring. next year. <laughs> I really want to go to the scouring of Stirlingshire. Hopefully, this year, if not next year, um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Because it's one of the OG ones that I always wanted to go to when I was younger, but never had the money or the travel bunnies to go. <laughs> and now I do. So, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do a road trip. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Thank you, everyone, for coming along and listening to our ramblings. Uh, remember to comment, like, share, subscribe, support your Hobbit hobby. Check out our Firestorm affiliate code. Um, if you do have tournament results from abroad that you want to give us, as I say, get in contact. We'll almost try certainly try and fit you in somewhere. Um, and yes, uh, until then, uh, stay shittery. Chitter, chitter. Yeah, say cherry, everybody. Chitter, chitter. I bought this from Firestorm Games. I bought this from Firestorm Games. I bought these from Firestorm Games. We're very, very proud here at Any Heroics to be affiliated with Firestorm.